Well, hello there. Fred Wagner, Papa's Painting Tips. Coming back at you finally after a long hiatus. <laughs> hiatus. I'm just doing a uh, uh, painting of a tiger. Obviously, you, you can see it. Uh, it's already been started. So, I just figured I would uh, do a little short tutorial on... Uh, doing fur again. I'm doing this one a little bit different than usual. I'm starting with a Payne's Gray base on Crescent Illustration Board. This is uh, airbrush board. It's a discontinued uh, board. So um, the best I could suggest if you're going to work on illustration board, get a hot pressed illustration board for airbrushing and uh, go from there see if it works for you I'm using uh, hang on I'm adjusting my lamp which is hitting my camera whoa earthquake not really okay let's see what the lighting looks like yeah it's not too bad I'm also working not on my uh, not on my easel today uh, I'm working flat on a drawing board uh, and painting. I've got my Euro tool, Germany uh, Euro tool. It's a, a scratch brush actually made for, uh, we've discussed this before, but it's actually made for um, jewelry cleaning and stuff like that. It's got fiberglass insert in here that's all uh, fibers and you scratch across the surface. What I've done is I've taken this is ETAC EFX paints and I've sprayed a base layer uh, on this upper corner and I've sprayed in well let's let's do a little bit of spraying. I've got my custom Micron SB here uh, using my California Air Tools compressor so if you hear it kick on it's not too noisy it's actually a pretty nice compressor for doing this type of work. Um, so, I'm at a disadvantage. I don't want to get my head in the way. But I'm just resting my hand lightly. And working on the fur pattern in here. The way I'm holding the airbrush is I've got my finger overlapping the trigger and I'm just flexing the tip of my finger down. It's a, a proper way to control the airbrush for higher control. And I just realized I was spraying when I shouldn't have been. I'm going in a little bit heavier in here because it's uh, The darker shadowing and I don't want to go full value on this uh, area not just yet and then for like the markings I'm just putting in uh, a fill layer just paying attention to my lines controlling my trigger as I go soft dagger stroke nice fades paying attention to where the well oh, there you go now you got an idea in my new studio my studio area ha 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 the guest bedroom in my house now one bad thing is I got shadow coming in I really should change this lamp let me see if I can change this lamp position so I could get rid of my shadowing from my hand Let's see. Let's see if we come in from an angle like that. That actually will be a lot better. Always start your air away. And then come in. Yeah, that's much better. I'm just going to work in this little stripe. I've got my cup turned. 
I've never worked flat surface like this before. Let's just put, I think you can see that. As I've gotten older, my hands have gotten shakier. So, this is actually kind of nice. It gives me a little steadier control over my airbrush. And like I said, this layer, you d I don't have to be real tight. I'm just misting, and then I'm going to work in my fur with the Euro tool. Let's see, we got it. I'm paying attention to shadows and background. Over here, where I've got fur already scratched in, I'm going to give it a little bit of dusting on here. I'm not going to go tight in on the fur yet. I've got to put in color on this. So I might just even start adding in some color. Real light dusting in here. Very light. There's not a lot of shadowing in here. This is the white area of the fur anyways around his markings. And once in a while I might drag out a couple dagger strokes to create some fur texture in there. Normally I won't start with the Payne's Gray. I'll, I'll start with like a brown or, or something. Or the orange even. And start the layers that way. But in this case, I want to do... Now what I'm doing with this is, this is kind of flat. So I'm just using the edge of it. I could also go in with a scalpel and scratch each little individual hair but this gives me a, a little broader stroke right now and I can get you know larger areas scratched in there this is an excellent way of uh, making fur texture if you're lacking uh, the ability to do daggers tight dagger strokes and you don't want to sit there all day pulling dagger stroke over dagger stroke this is a good way of building your fur texture. You say, yeah, Fred, you've done tigers before. And it's like, it's okay. I like tigers. Wouldn't want to meet one in person other than in a zoo. They tend to eat people. Nah, not really. I love the colors and markings. That's that's the most draw, I think, for people with tigers is their color and their markings. Now, over here, I'm just doing kind of a tap and a little pull because oh, the fur texture is going up, and it's short. And here's the long strokes for the hair. And you can see I oversprayed there, so I'll just erase that away. Uh, that was my bad. And the hair on this ear kind of goes up here. Okay. And then this, it, it, this method you can pull long. See over here. I got, it's a little rough. Very easily fixable. For areas, if you make a little mistake, you can also take creative license. I just, hey, I also, I want to thank a lot of people for uh, their concern uh, of my health and such in the past. And uh, their nice messages on my YouTube channel here. Um been really nice. It was such a blessing. God is truly good. God is bringing me through a lot of situations in my life. And uh, this world is going a little bit wacko. 
lately. So, it's not just my life. It's others that I've known. Struggles. But, I've had a lot of, a lot of friends, uh, a lot of church members at the church I attend ask me, you know, if everything's going good. And uh, if I've been painting. And unfortunately, I had to tell no, I haven't been painting a lot lately. It, it, another thing is, is I'm a fisherman. And also, I like to fly stunt kites uh, when I can. And it, during the summertime, I kind of concentrate on fishing and stunt kites and that. I think I've mentioned in other videos that I bought had bought a kayak. Well, health-wise, I couldn't do the kayak anymore. Um, I've had a lot of issues with my back uh, and my feet. And I'm just, I'm struggling a lot uh, with pain. And I'm refusing to take painkiller type medicine only because I don't want to fog my brain. It's already foggy enough. Right, over here, I'm just going to pull in a few shorter edge for the fur. That's long fur up in there. And I think what I want to do in here is I want to get a soft eraser. And I'm going to soften some of these so they're not as harsh. I'm just wiping, brushing off my eraser. And over here I can take that off. Just taking off that overspray. Normally I'd be working on my clay board, but I have not prepped any. Um, kind of got lazy, I guess. I didn't want to do. I got all this illustration board sitting there. And you've watched me do a bunch of work on there we go beautiful you've watched me do a lot of clay board work so i figured i would do something here now on this edge i don't want a solid line there obviously i haven't even gone into whether i want to a, a background color on this or not i i may leave it white who knows just for intensity or just a mist of green. I was thinking black to pop the tiger right out and uh, which would be cool to do that. Okay, over here we got longer going into the mane on this tiger. So we're scratching longer strokes. Another thing is when you uh, do go to spray again. Make sure you get rid of some of these little particles. Because if you spray on them, these little spots, they'll, they'll get stuck down to the board. It's kind of nice. I, don't have, I can move this around. I know you're shaking. I'm very, very sorry. This is not the most sturdy... Situations for recording. I'm using my phone. All right. And then over here, it's again softer. So, and long. Always pay attention to the direction. This tiger's fur is growing. 
Oh no. See over here, I think I'm just getting rid of these little spots. That's what I was saying about the dust. If you spray on it and don't realize you had the little dust there. Now I'm pulling into this mark to create that texture. Working this method gives you a lot of leeway for correction. You goof something up, you could erase it right out and come back later and fix it up. Now, as I've discussed in other videos on animals, normally the fur pattern grows from the nose, bridge of the nose inward, then begins to turn and goes in a circular pattern up like that, like that. And then over here it starts working its way down on the cheek in this direction till you get down into the muzzle and into the cheeks and then the same on the other side it grows in then begins to turn up like this and then around the out it's a cir two circular patterns that kind of grow like like that and it's it's a general uh fact of most all animals uh, the way their fur grows did you know the markings on tigers and uh, other animals are based off of the skin uh, colorations where the markings are it's an interesting little fun fact so if this tiger were shaved down I'm going to put a little bit of texture into this marking just to give it depth because otherwise it will appear flat like a painted on blob of paint rather than looking like fur and I'm paying attention to that direction that I'm scraping but yeah if, if you shave down this animal's fur it, these markings would be relative on the skin. Okay. So, let's do a little bit on this marking here. I'm not going to make a huge long video. I'm just going to give you a little bits and pieces of this one. Maybe pop it all together, maybe put, you know, little sections up uh, here and there. But this is how I build my layers of fur. I had one gentleman ask me uh, on one of the forums... How the heck I can take and step away for so long and then come back and just pick it right up. And honestly, I don't know. I think it's just a blessing from God and the talent he's given me. And I just, I humbly give all the glory to him because I just ain't got a clue. He gives me this ability and I do the best I can do with it. And I try to use it to, to help others learn. Now if you notice I'm coming down straight because this is where it's coming off the forehead paying attention to the length pull a couple in here there's a 
like so. All right. Make sure I wipe off the the fiberglass that breaks off this can get in your skin uh, and it can hurt. So be aware when you're cleaning up and such. You don't rub it with bare hands because you might get it into your skin. Oh, let's see. Do we want to add color? Right now, let's, let's not add color just yet. We won't add color yet. I'm going to give a little more definition in this first. I'm going to try to not get in your way. It's just, there's... I'm just putting tiny little lines in here. I don't want to get too, too detailed up in here because the main, I, oh, my head was probably in your way just then. I have learned not to blow on my drawings. I have a tendency to spit. Always keep that air flowing. Trying to keep my my motion parallel to the surface. Another thing with working on an illustration board is not as absorbent. So you gotta be careful not to flood the surface. It will dry. It's just you can't flood that surface as much as you can with clayboard. Clayboard will suck it right in. Right. Maybe a couple down in here. Here I'm a little bit looser, a little bit thicker dagger strokes. Okay, and then now I'm gonna mist into this area here. Get these a little bit darker. That one doesn't need to be. This one does. Now see where you've done the scrape, um, that scraping. Where you've done your scratching. Now creates multiple layers of color because you're not obliterating the scratch marks. You're doubling up your layer. Now this little marking here comes up. I'm trying not to screw this up. Because I got one marking here, I got one marking there. Alright, that's why. That's why I'm getting confused. This one comes down like this. And then dips in right here. All 
I always make sure I put my cap on before I put that up. I've kicked my airbrush off this holder before and uh, sent the airbrush down on its tip. Okay, now I gotta open this up because this marking does not join that way. And then this one. We can re-emphasize some of those. See? And there's our marking in there. Perfect. Just the way it is on the photo. And I've got my photo sitting right here that I'm working from. And up in here I can put a couple, fix up a couple spots I didn't like. So, I'm going to pause, clean out my airbrush, and put in some color. And then we'll add a little color to this. Okay, I've mixed up like a creamy orange color. I'm actually, I don't want it as orange as it is. I want it a little bit. More to a golden ochre color. So I'm going to, instead of gonna dump some out, I'm going to change it over. It's just way too orange. I don't know if you can see it in there. Too orange. So I'm going to add probably about five, five or six drops of golden ochre. And mix this up. I always point my brush away from my drawing surface. And instead of back flushing, don't back flush people. Can't back flush. And the reason being is you're forcing air inside your nozzle and up into the cup. And it will dry the paint inside your cup. So, I'm going to spray it into my little pot over here. No, I did not say I'm using pot. And just spray it through until the new color comes out. Now, i got to kind of pay attention to where I'm spraying this. And I'm just going to lightly mist over the colored areas. On this tiger up here. This is real soft coloring in here. It's going into the white over here. And it's as simple as this, everyone. It's not really hard. And then up on his ear in this area. And then we got a little bit of coloration coming into here. And then a pinch on the edge of his ear over here. And if anyone knows me on here, they know I am not a stencil type person. Not that there's anything wrong with using a stencil. Whatever you need to create your artwork. You could use a toothbrush if you wanted to, if it works for you. Yes, I said toothbrush. You heard me. I don't want to saturate this. And I'm going to intensify some of the areas. Over in here, we've got a little bit of color coming into here. Key thing to do, uh, and especially portraitures and such, I would strongly suggest write down your color mixture. So when you go to reproduce your color mixture, you will be able to. All right. 
So there's there's that little bit of color over in the into this. This can be drawn back down into here. And then down on here. We're gonna pull that down into there. I hope this is recording or I was speaking to nothing. Yes. Alright. You can see a little bit of color. Let's uh let's enlarge for you. Give you a little better view of what I'm working on. And now we're gonna go back in to move this over into the center. And we're just gonna start pulling some of this fur again and this will give us a second layer over in here there's not a lot of sharp detail so I'm just lightly stroking this Again, this is longer fur over here. Over her. I gotta put some brown into this. Up on the top of this little tuft of fur that hangs over the edge of the ear. That's a little bit brighter. Let's get a little more white into that area. Oh, but I was saying earlier um, about my health, the pain in my back and the pain in my feet has increased. I've got quite a bit of nerve problems going on. I've also found that I'm anemic. So that means since I had that kidney cancer, the one remaining kidney is not telling my body to produce enough red blood cells and my levels are all off. So, go to the doctors next week and I'm going to have to cover all that and find out what's going on. But as you can see, you got a good amount of layering starting to develop into this area. And we can, we're going to intensify those black markings. We're not going to keep it, this, little, this guy, this soft. I'm just paying attention to some of the tufts of fur in here. And as usual today, I'm doing laundry. <laughs> yeah, ain't that special. I'm going to leave some of these little spots of lighter white where I've scratched in. Some I'm going to cover over. Depends on uh, what we, what's in the reference. I mean, I don't have to follow the reference exactly, but it's so beautiful. Tigers are so beautiful. I love their colors. See how it drags a couple little lines up in here for longer fur, and then we'll mute it back a little with the darker. That's just the paint gray for right now to get the underlying textures. And this I could take hours upon hours, which I'm I'm going to on this one. I want to do another really, really nice detailed tiger. I don't know if I'll try to sell it. I don't know if I'll keep it. I don't know. All depends. How I'm feeling. Okay, we've got 
had a piece of fur over here. Two of them, actually. Like so. Okay. And let's... Like I said, if I were to <laughs> do a full tiger video, you're, you're talking a good 25, 35 hours worth of video. I mean, it'd be longer than a full featured movie. Be like a mini series <laughs> on TV. Another Gone with the Wind. I'd become a cult classic. Okay, and up here we're going straight up the head to go over onto the neck. Lots and lots and lots and lots of scratching. Under big girl, big boy. I don't know. How do you tell whether it's a male or a female on a tiger? Well, besides the sex organ or a penis and a you know what. <laughs> oh, this is children's hour. I hope you're liking what's going on here. And, you know, I've done a painting about the tiger's eye, so I don't feel I really have to cover that. But let's, uh, let's see, what do I want to do up in there? Because it, it looks a little scratchy. I think we will do another soft layer. Now where it doubles over. It intensifies that color. Now I'm using transparents. So it will continue to get darker. If it were opaques, it would get to the full saturation of the opaque and it wouldn't go any further. So we've got lighter. I'm paying attention to the depth of the fur and color. Feathering the trigger and pulling down on my stroke. I'm going to pull up a little. I don't know if my, I don't think my hair in that's in the way. But I'm moving my whole shoulder and my arm now. Let's add a little darker brown to this. 
Oh, I'm not sure how much brown I can't see in here. Into my what brown do I got? Hmm, that I want to use. Where's my brown ochre? I think I'll put a little burnt umber in this. this. Is what I'll do. If I can find it. There's burnt umber. Kind of grayish brown. Let's uh let's be smart and put my nozzle cap on here so I don't see putting that nozzle cap on there, man. I'm not gonna do a lot on this right now. I'm just doing little by little. I'm enjoying myself. Let's take out quite a bit of this color in my cup. There's not a lot. I'm gonna add a little transparent base to what's left in there and a, maybe a drop or two of water. I want this to really be transparent. My colors have, I have not painted in so long. A lot of my colors have separated out and settled. So I've got to do extra shaking. Extra shaking and baking. See, oh, darn good thing I didn't have that over my painting. That would have destroyed it all. The pink just shot right up in the air out of the bottle after shaking it. Right, let's do four drops into the little bit I had left. See where my color goes. That's not bad. Yeah, that, that suffices. Now we're going to spray into my spraying pot till that color comes through. A little more. And all I've done is I've created a brownish orange. Had to drop the needle tip and stab my finger on my needle. Or not the needle tip, the needle cap. This chair does not want to move. Alright. Make sure that still sprays. Okay, we're just gonna go into some of this. Oh, I'm probably in the way. Move my head out of the way. Now where I'm spraying these little hairlines, I'm not covering over the lighter colors. I'm going next to them to create depth in between fur. Here, this is a little bit darker, so I can use a little softer, broader stroke. I'm going to light 
heating that one up. Up in here. I should turn my cup so I don't accidentally pour paint out. It's not that deep, so. A little heavier because there's a definitely a division in depth in here. You can hear my needles starting to want to start clogging there. Now it's starting to create depth in the back of that. Moving my board. And we got a little more depth now. We can bring some of this. Up into here. Intensify this marking here. Just using that brown, that's okay to, you can do that. It'll work. Yeah. I've got a marking here that i got to readjust because this marking actually divides. I could make it my own. And this is what I'm talking about, that little spot in there. Okay, this little marking in here, actually, this comes down. And then we got there. Actually comes down like this and then there's a spot right there and this comes up higher now I can take my go back and put that yellowish in there color that yellowish color and redo that and I'm gonna take some of these and redefine some of this fur work on it. Okay. And then this one comes up here. Yeah, I will I will be spraying back into this that yellow ochre color to create the lightest because I'm going right back to the whiteboard so now I can go back in I'm working real soft. I'm not scratching all of the paint. 
am remembering to leave some. But there's a little basic start to this painting. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm gonna sign out of this video now. Actually, you know what I will do? Before I do that. Yeah, I got some more areas I want to read define here. Truthfully, this is one of the messiest areas on the tiger portrait. The way his fur is, and he's got a little, this little, uh, almost dirty look to the fur there. There we go. That's good. see any other brown in this area that I want to work on before I take it out yeah I do see something I want to do this in a little bit deepen this It's looking good in the neighborhood. Yeah, I'm just going to pop this color out of here real quick. Put my needle cap back on. Pop this color out. Which I'm just going to swish it out with a brush that I got over here. That's not a problem. It's my prerogative. Oh. I'm just spraying out that color that's in there. Now I'm just going to take some golden ochre. Straight out the bottle. I'm not going to bother reducing this one. Because this is just... Got me a mist. Yes, I see that. And I will attempt to fix that. What I think I might do up here, I got a little paper towel. I'm just going to dab these. I think I'm going to make a side station. Uh, for cleaning my airbrush and mixing colors and changing colors only because it's going to become haphazard like you just saw yeah. truthfully that what just happened over here isn't gonna matter let's let that dry on the board before we mess with it too much uh, it's, it's not gonna, I don't want to spit paint on things cleaning on here. Um, I'm also thinking of angling 
the board just a touch. So we want a little mist of golden ochre in here just to make this for a little richer looking. Golden ochre when it comes through the brush is very, very yellow. And I'm not doing all of it, obviously. Because I'm going to go back in with a little bit of uh, gray brown. To me, this, this picture of this tiger, his face is quite faded uh, coloration. So, I don't want to go hog wild on the yellow and the orange. But I want it a little bit more intense than the photograph. Sorry if my hair keeps getting in the way. I forget that I've got this in a different position. It's just taking down, I got a soft eraser here. And I'm just taking down the intensity of that yellow by softly rubbing over it. I'm not taking my base layers off. All right. Well, everybody, I uh, just want to say God bless. Thank you for joining in on this little little bit of video. Again, it's not a full tiger because you wouldn't want to stick around that long, would you? Let's uh, zoom out. Get a better look at what we got so far. Okay. Well, God bless. And, uh, you know, keep praying for me. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, and uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the bottom uh, right hand corner there and uh, follow along. Hopefully I'll get some more paintings over the winter time here since I'm not going to be out fishing. I do not like ice fishing, sorry. I would rather be warm in, in my little house here. So God bless, take care, and I, I pray the Lord will keep you and I will see you again soon.